everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we're going to learn how to crochet the cobblestone beanie, which is a beautiful textured beanie uh, featuring a fun single crochet puff stitch uh, as the main texture. For the hat today, our, this hat today can be worked, as you can see, without a pom-pom or with a pom-pom. It's really up to you. I have some more photos on richtexturescrochet.com if you'd like to see some more photos of this. For the tutorial today, I'm going to be using a medium weight or worsted weight yarn. I'll be working in the Wool Ease yarn by Lion Brand. I'm going to be working in the color Umber today, which is a beautiful kind of brown color. You're going to need one ball of yarn. This ball has about 197 yards in it and you're going to use most of the ball for this crochet hat. You're also going to need a 5 millimeter or an H8 crochet hook and links to these items can be found in the description of this video. So thank you so much for joining me. While you're here I invite you to subscribe, take a look around, and uh, let's grab our hooks and yarn and get started. Now our hat today is worked in rows and we're going to be working from the brim up. The hat size we're working today will fit an adult head uh, with a 20 to 22 inch circumference. I am going to give you multiples very shortly on as far as um, which will help you change the size should you need to change the size. The brim of our hat is worked in rows. We're going to start by making a slip knot and then by working a foundation chain. And your foundation chain today is going to be a total of 10 stitches, 10 chain stitches. Once you have your 10 stitches worked, you're going to begin row one by working a slip stitch into the second chain from your hook and then slip stitch into each stitch all the way across. At the end of this row you're going to have a total of nine slip stitches. At the end of row one you can chain one and turn your work. Now for row two and for every row hereafter for your brim you're going to be working in the back loop only. To find the back loop only if you look at the top of your stitch you have a loop that is closest to you. This is your front loop and then you also have a loop that is in back. This is your back loop. So working in that back loop only, you're going to slip stitch into that first stitch and then slip stitch into each stitch all the way across, always working in that back loop only. You will continue to have nine slip stitches. If you are not a fan of working slip stitches, you may also work single crochet stitches or half double crochet stitches. It's really up to you or a combination of all three or two. Uh, it's really up to you for your brim. When you come across at the end of row two, you're going to chain one, turn your work, and then repeat, working in the back loop only all the way across, slip stitch, into that first stitch and each stitch. You're going to continue to repeat row two until your work from the beginning measures approximately 16 to 17 inches. And that's when the fabric is relaxed and not stretched. When it is stretched, it should fit comfortably around that 20 to 22 inch circumference for the head. If you would like to change the size, you can simply work more or less rows of uh, your row to repeat. Once you have worked your repeats of row two until your work from the beginning 
Riser is approximately 16 to 17 inches when not stretched. This is what your work should look like. What you're going to do is you're going to take your two shorter ends and you're going to fold them over so that they meet. You're then going to work a slip stitch seam so your yarn is still attached. You can chain one and turn if you need to. And you're going to work a slip stitch seam all the way across. Now for mine, I'm going to work by inserting my hook in the back loop only of the first side and then reach across over to the back loop only of the second side and then work a slip stitch. Now depending on how you worked into that foundation chain you may find you don't have a back loop so you're just going to insert your hook through that loop that is there but if you did into the back bumps as I did you'll be able to work into the back loops only of both thicknesses. Again, you're going to do this all the way across, making sure that you're not skipping any stitches or working twice into the stitches. And it's just going to create a nice slip stitch seam all the way up the side. Again, you'll have a total of nine slip stitches. When you come across to the end, you're going to chain one. You can leave your yarn attached and turn your work so that it is right side out. Your seam should be on the inside. You're then ready to work the body of the hat and we're going to work along this around this rough edge. The rest of the hat is worked in rounds. We're going to start by working 72 half double crochet stitches all the way around. So when I'm working these half double crochets, I'm just inserting my hook where it is comfortable and you'll want to work a total of 72 half double crochets. If you would like to change the size of your beanie for this round, you will need a multiple of two stitches, so an even number of half double crochets. Today I will be working 72. Once you have worked 72 half double crochet stitches all the way around, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of the first stitch. Do not turn your work and you're going to chain one. Now for rounds two and three, we're going to work in the third loop and we're going to be working a half double crochet. So when you look at your stitches you, at the front of your work and at the top of your work, you have your front loop, your back loop. If you turn your work over so that you're looking at the back of your work, you'll see a loop that runs horizontally along under that back loop. This is your third loop. So you're going to be work inserting your hook into that third loop only and working your half double crochet stitch. Working in the third loop all the way around, you're going to half double crochet in each stitch. When you come to your first stitch, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch, chain one and repeat. So this is for rounds two, and three, and then meet me back here. At the end of round three, you'll have joined with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch, and this is what your work will look like from the beginning. For round four, we're going to continue working in the same direction, and you're going to chain one. You're then going to work a single crochet puff stitch into the first stitch. To work a single crochet puff stitch, you're going to single crochet into that same stitch's joining, followed by a puff stitch also into the same single cro uh, the same stitch. To work the puff stitch, yarn over, insert your hook into the same stitch, yarn over and drop a loop, yarn over, insert your hook into the same stitch, 
yarn over and draw up a loop. With five loops on your hook, yarn over and draw through all five loops. That's your single crochet puff stitch. You're then going to skip the next stitch and into your next stitch, repeat single crochet puff stitch. Single crochet, followed by a puff stitch into the same stitch. You're going to repeat this all the way around. Skip the next stitch, single crochet, and puff stitch into your next. All the way around until you have one stitch remaining and you will skip that final stitch before joining with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. At the end of your row four, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. You're skipping that final stitch. The first stitch is that single crochet. Join with your slip stitch. You're then going to chain one, and now you're going to turn your work. After each of your single crochet puff stitch rows, you will be turning your work. Now for rows five, six, or rounds five, six, and seven, you're going to continue working single crochet puff stitches. You're going to begin by working your first single crochet and puff into that same stitches joining, which was that single crochet. So single crochet, followed by a puff stitch into that first stitch. You're then going to skip the next stitch and into your next single crochet, work a single crochet puff stitch. You're going to repeat this all the way around, skip one, single crochet puff into the next stitch, all the way around to your first stitch. You can join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch, chain one, turn, and repeat. So this is for rounds five, six, and seven, and then at that time, at the end of round seven, you will meet me back here. At the end of round seven, you're going to chain one and turn your work. You should have now have the right side of your work facing you. And for round eight, we're going to work a half double crochet into that first stitch. And then simply half double crochet into each stitch all the way around. So that's into each single crochet and into each puff stitch at the end of this round you will join with the slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. At the end of round eight join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch and chain one. Do not turn your work and now for rounds nine through to fourteen you're going to repeat rounds two through to seven once more. So your round two, beginning with your half double crochet in the third loop round, and uh, you'll work rounds, uh, the repeat of rounds two and three, which is uh, the half double crochet in the third loop, and then you will work your single crochet and puff stitch rounds. At the end of your round 14, so the repeat of your round 7, you can meet me back here. Once you finish your round 14, you'll have finished off with a single crochet puff stitch round. This is your work from the beginning. Now for round 15, you're going to chain one and we're going to start working some decrease rounds, so closing the top of our hat. You're going to work a half double crochet into each of the next six stitches. You're
You're then going to work a half double crochet two stitches together. To work your half double crochet two together, yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over and draw out a loop. You can then either yarn over and insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, draw up a loop, or you can simply insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over and draw up a loop. You'll have four loops on your hook and then yarn over and pull through. You're then going to repeat that all the way around. Work a half double crochet into each of the next six stitches. And then half double crochet two stitches together all the way around until you come to your first stitch where you will join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. At the end of round 15 you're going to have a total of 63 stitches. You can join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch and chain one. You're now going to work in the third loop all the way around you're going to work a half double crochet into each of the next five stitches. You're then going to work a half double crochet two stitches together. Repeat that all the way around half double crochet into each of the next five stitches and half double crochet two stitches together. Repeat that all the way around and join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. At the end of round 16 you'll have a total of 54 stitches. You can join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch and chain one. For round 17 you're going to repeat your round 16 working in the third loop or almost repeat I should say working in the third loop only. You're going to half double crochet into each of the next four stitches. So there's one two, three, and four, and then work your half double crochet two stitches together, still working in that third loop. You're going to repeat that all the way around half double crochet into each of the next four stitches. And half double crochet two stitches together. Repeat that all the way around and join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. At the end of round 17 you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. You'll have a total of 45 stitches. You're going to chain one. Do not turn your work. Now for round 18 we're going to work a puff stitch into each of the next three stitches. So for this you're just working the puff stitch portion of that single crochet puff. So yarn over, insert your hook into this same, uh, the next stitch, the same stitch is joining in this case. Yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over, insert your hook into the same stitch, yarn over and draw up a loop. Five loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all five loops. So you're working that puff stitch. You're going to work one in each of the next two stitches. So you'll have three puff stitches in total. You're then going to work a half double crochet two stitches together. You're now going to repeat that all the way around puff stitch into each of the next three stitches.
and then half double crochet two stitches together. I'm going to repeat this all the way around and you'll join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. At the end of round 18, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. Chain one, do not turn your work. Now for round 19, at the end of round 18, you'll have a total of 36 stitches. For round 19, you're going to puff stitch in each of the next two stitches. And then half double crochet two stitches together. You're going to repeat this all the way around, puff stitch in each of the next two stitches, and then half double crochet, two stitches together, all the way around until you come to your first stitch and you'll join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. At the end of round 19, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch and chain one, you'll have a total of 27 stitches. For round 20, you're going to puff stitch into the next stitch and then work a half double crochet, two stitches together. You're going to repeat this all the way around, puff stitch into your next stitch and half double crochet, two stitches together. All the way around until you come to your first stitch where you will join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. At the end of round 20, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch and chain one. You'll have a total of 18 stitches. Now for round 21, which is our final round, you're simply going to work a half double crochet, two together in each stitch all the way around. So simply half double crochet, two stitches together all the way around. At the end of this round, you will have a total of nine stitches. You're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. And you're then going to fasten off, leaving a little bit of a long tail. You're then going to take that long tail, thread it through your yarn needle, and for this part I like to turn the hat so that it is inside out. And you're going to use the long tail to sew the top of your hat closed. To sew the top of the hat closed, there's a few methods you can use. I like to just weave it in and out through the top stitches around the top of my hat. Once I come all the way around, once you come all the way around, you're simply going to pull the top of the hat closed and secure. You can then weave in your ends, go ahead and fasten off any tails that you have. Turn your beanie so that it is right side out. And that is how you work 
your cobblestone beanie. You can add a yarn pom-pom there to the top if you wish, or uh, a faux fur as I have here. It's really up to you. So thank you so much for joining me. Once again, don't forget to subscribe. This channel is updated every week with free crochet patterns and stitch tutorials. If you happen to make the cobblestone beanie and share it on social media, be sure to tag Rich Textures Crochet. I'll come by and admire it. So until next time, happy crocheting. Bye. Mm -hmm.